Welcome to a new video about motherboard response filter design. In this example, we will discuss the high pass filter circuit. We will use the selling key filter configuration to design the circuit according to the specifications. Of course, we will see everything step by step in our calculations and verify these in SPI simulations. Okay, our design objective is shown here. We like to design a motherboard response active high pass filter. As said, we need to use the selling key filter circuit that will be clarified in more detail shortly. And we also need to calculate the actual stop and attenuation. Also, this is clarified in a minute. The specifications are shown here. We need to have a maximum pass band ripple, which is defined by a max, which is 2 dB here. The minimum attenuation, stop and attenuation we need is 20 dB. And the cutoff frequency in this case must be 4 kHz and the stop band frequency is 1 kHz. So that means actually the following. At this frequency, 1 kHz, we need to have an attenuation of 20 dB minimum. So we can go above, but that is the minimum required according to this design. So let's see what we need to do in this example. Okay, first the calculations. We start first with the filter order of our high pass filter circuit. So we start with the scaling of this A max and A minimum to the epsilon P. That's actually shown here, this formula. So we substitute here the two and we get here the scaling of 0.7648. Now similarly for epsilon S, which is then related to that A minimum. And that is then calculated again using this 20 dB here and you get here 9.9499. Now, taking all this together, we use the formula for the butter response high path filter. And this is now shown here the epsilons and also the cutoff frequency and the stop and frequency from our specifications. Now, when you substitute here the values, you get here 1.85 approximately. But we need to use integer values in order to design our filter circuit. Of course, you can try to go for the first order, but that is not sufficient for this design. So we need to use the NS2 or the second order filter. Now for our circuit realization, as said before, you need to use a selling key and that will be done in this case at two poles since we have a second order. So we need to use this configuration of the high pass filter and that is shown here. We see here the unity gain feedback. So the gain is one at high frequencies. We see two capacitors C1 and C2 and we have two resistors R1 and R2. So we need to determine these four components values. That's the next step. Step two is the component values. So how can we do that now? In order to do this more efficiently, we can say, let's set the C1 and C2 equal to each other and pick a num value that is in this case 10 nanofarads. The next step is then the scaling factor calculation. This is an important step. And that is then defined for the high pass filter design like R, which is then our scaling factor here, is equal to one over the capacitor we just determined or selected uh, times the cutoff frequency in omegas and of course we did do this now 2 pi times this 4 kilohertz and that's then shown here so this is then 10 to the power minus 8 which is then 10 nano farads 2 pi times 4000 from the 4 kilohertz cutoff frequency now this will result in 3978.9 this is a number we will use in the Comp uh, calculation of the R1 and R2. Now for that we need to use the Butterward response table. You see here the filter order going from 2 up to 8. Number of sections. In this case we have also the sections like 2-pole and 3-pole. These will be clarified in the later videos. We have here the first row which is talking about the C1 over C etc. Or we can have the R over R1 and R over R2, etc. Now we take here the second row if we design a high pass filter. This row will be taken if we have a low pass filter. But what is actually meaning by this uh, number here? Let's go directly to our filter order NS2 and clarify this in more detail. You see here the R, which is our scaling factor, over the R1, which is the component we need to calculate in our circuit. That ratio must be 1.414. Now that is also in a similar case true for R over R2, which is this resistor value, and that should be then 0.7071. So if I now look at a table and then write it down here in more clearly uh, form, then I have here R1 is equal to R over this 1.414. That's actually from this analysis or actually this expression. 
And again, a similar case, we have here the R2, which is then the R over 0 0.7071. Now that is what we see. And now we can use this scaling factor R in here and then divide by this parameter here from a table. And it will give us approximately 2.8 kilo ohms. For the R2, we get a similar situation. So again, the scaling factor over the 0.701 from the table, and that will result in 5.6 kilo ohms approximately. So we have now our resistor values calculated from the selected capacitor of 10 nanofarads and also using the parameters from the table here. Let's now calculate the next part, which is the actual stop attenuation. By the way, we are done with our design because we have calculated all the components. We have selected our circuit so we can build this circuit actually and then verify our results. Of course, we will do that shortly in the simulations in this video. Okay, now the actual stop end attenuation for that we start first with the pass band frequency. This frequency is important to understand that we have a 2 dB attenuation at that uh, specific frequency which we'll now calculate. So this pass band frequency for the high pass filter is given by this formula. You see the pass band frequency Fp is equal to cutoff frequency Fc times this epsilon p to the power minus 1 over n. So for the low pass filter it was actually to the power plus 1 over n, so just not the minus sign. So in this case we have only the minus sign, that's the only change. Now we know the cutoff frequency 4000 or 4 kilohertz, we know the epsilon p from our step 1 this frequency, as said before, we will have an attenuation of 2 dB or our gain will be there at minus A max or minus 2 dB. We will see that shortly in the simulations. Then we can calculate now the A minimum actual that is then given by this formula. You see here the stop band frequency, the pass band frequency, the filter order N and also the epsilon P. Now substitute the values in here, you get here 24.1 dB. You can also, for this case, calculate the A minimum, actual A minimum, using the formula where you have the cutoff frequency, which is in this case much faster and straightforward. Now we have only the cutoff frequency and the stop and frequency, the filter order. So you don't need here the epsilon p. I also don't need to calculate the pass band frequency. So this goes much faster. Then you have actually again here 4000 over 1000. That is, of course, from the specifications to the power 2 times 2, which is then 4. And that will result in 24.1 dB. So this is the exact same as before. Okay, let's now look at the simulation results and verify our calculations. Now this is the circuit in the SPI simulator. This is the body plot. You see the, the frequencies and the gain. And the blue line is our gain plot. Okay, now these are the calculations and the selected values we have here. So C1, C2, R1 and R2 and also the pass band frequency and also our actual stop band attenuation. You also see the values here, R1 and R2 and the capacitors, etc. Now let's go one by one. The high frequency gain is indeed 0 dB. You see that actually this flat line, which is actually 0 dB. You see here the gain is minus 2 dB at this frequency, which is then 4.574 kilohertz, which is also what we have calculated. So this is indeed correct. And the gain is here minus 3.01 dB at 4 kilohertz. And this is an, of course an important uh, value, which says Going from this high frequency gain or the baseline of 0 dB, you go down by 3.01 dB. And that is, of course, the definition of the cutoff frequency. So this is also correct and according to specifications. The final one is our gain is here minus 24.1 dB. So minus 24.1 dB at 1 kilohertz. And that is the also the gain we have calculated at that specific frequency. And this is the stop band attenuation. And we required, by the way, 20 dB, so we have sufficient attenuation at that frequency. So if you have less, let's say 70 dB for your design, then you don't fulfill this specification. So we have now uh, met all the specifications according to this design. All right, it was our example considering the high pass, active high pass filter design for a Butterworth response filter. We use a cell and key filter configuration and we have used the Butterworth response table to calculate the component values and verify this in SPI simulations. If you have any questions, feel free to com uh, comment in the comment section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.